you know, we have people here from all over the, all over the world, you know, different places in the world, and we all think differently about mental health, different cultures, we contextualize it in different ways, and then many of us struggle, whether we say it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we talk about it with other people or just keep it to ourselves. The point is, many of us struggle. We have these bodies and we're, our spirits are born into them. And then, you know, we're left here, as my wife says, without a roadmap. I mean, there's no operating instruction. You know, if you're thinking and you're alive, then you have a lot of questions. And the questions gives rise to more questions. And so our mental health is just as important as our physical health. And so when you think about all that physical ailments that we have, right, all of us, whether we, you know, we have a sore knee or we get a sore back or we have this or we have that, we have just as many as many mental ailments or psychological ailments. And so that's what we're going to talk about today a little bit. Okay, y'all? Hello, my name is Gun Hyung. I'm from South Korea. Um, my name's Tim. Well, that's my white name, but my real name is Ting Wei. Uh, oh, right. China, my bad. Ting Wei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From China. Uh, my name's Brooke. I'm from a really small town, but it's close to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. My name is Sai, and I'm from India. My name is Mohanad. I'm from Saudi Arabia. My name is Angel, and I'm from France. And you're the lone American, so. And you haven't been in, you've never been in therapy? Like, I'm not even going to ask. See, I wouldn't even ask these other folks because I know the answer is no. You've never been in therapy. What do you think we need to know? Mm. Like, because you're passionate about this, right? Yeah. What, what, like, what, what makes you passionate? Like, what do you... The thing is, I'm just passionate about mental health in general because, like, I just love mental health and then that's what I want to do for a living. But what, what is it that you love? So... Because I think it's fascinating, and I think I grew up in a family where mental health was really important. I didn't want to go to therapy when I started like um, school here, but like it was my mom was like, "No, you need to go." Like, Your Indian mom. Yeah, like my family is uh, very open, and I have family here, so it's very open. They're very open to everything. Like it's not like every other Indian family. So, okay, what do you think? What makes them open? I think it's because my mom comes from a really wealthy family and because she's exposed to like, I think my, my dad's not like that. My dad was like from like a probably middle class family. My mom was super wealthy yeah. and I think she was exposed to like, I don't know, just upper class things that yeah, she's yeah, yeah. so open and that's what I believe is that's why she is so open and mm. that's who she is. And I don't think everybody has that uh, accessibility and I, I don't think everybody is fortunate that way. So I feel like um, to the question you asked that I am fascinated because I just, I am the kind of person I'm really interested in mental health. Like, yeah. That's in me and I'm, I've grown up with a family that's really involved in mental health. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's one reason why I want to do, but like in general in India, I feel like, here's the thing that I wanted to ask you a question as well. Like, I just don't think it's in India, but I think overall around the world, yeah. for men, mental yeah. health is not a thing. Like, if I, in this room, I'm like, how many of the, like, if I should show of hands, all the men who go for therapy, I, I don't know if there are going to be a lot of people. It, no, it's, it's many fewer men yeah. who are willing to, because people have the idea that um, if you have to sit down and talk to somebody, this is like, it. this is very much... An Arab thing, but definitely a Nigerian thing, though. Not a French thing, but if you have to sit down and talk to somebody, it's 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 a, it's a demonstration of some sign of weakness what? or something. But like everyone is weak. That's what I don't get. It. No, no, no. Everyone is weak and everyone is strong, right? Yeah, I get but that. But if you if you don't, but if you don't need to go to therapy, if you're struggling, like Ting Wei is like saying, yeah, like, but I'm tired. I'm, I'm str you know, you're struggling with some. What is something that mimics depression of some sort, right? But whatever that is, I mean, it could be lots of different things, you know. But the idea is if you have to talk about it, it's a sign that you're weak. But it, and at the same time, if you, if you don't talk about it and you just keep plowing through, it's also a sign that you're strong. Right. Even though you're strong 
in the wrong ways, right? So, bro, Ting Wei, you're an athlete, right? You, you fence. And you know, like, if you have bad form as a fencer, right, you're going you're gonna to develop the wrong muscles. Okay. What would lead you to say, man, I got to go talk to somebody? I actually, <laughs> I would never sit down and talk to somebody. I'm sorry. But, but that's just me, though. Like, I genuinely feel Wait, but like you talk to your friends, don't you? No, but like I You don't talk I to your don't. friends? No. <laughs> well, I do talk to my friends, but like not if I'm going through something. Like, what do you t- what do you do, man? Well, I mean, my So mom, hang on, you got to tell us about this might be like some French Nigerian like who No, my mom just like really expressed like meditation and like if you feel like there's something off, you need to like explore what's off. So you need to like meditate on it and like see like what part of your body is like telling you that something's off. So like I, I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of alone time. You know, I just do a lot of sitting and thinking. But like I generally don't think like you can make me sit down and talk to somebody about my feelings because like everybody might feel some type of way, but like the product of that is different. You know, I don't know if you understand what that means. Oh yeah, no, totally. Dude. Like I could talk to a therapist or two therapists and tell them, "Hey, I'm feeling this way," and they'll be like, "Oh, it's because of this," but it really isn't always because of that. Yeah, no, definitely, no, yeah. no, no. This is the this is the process of like of uh-huh. of sort of um of discernment. Yeah. Right? You have to discern. And, and that's the thing, like, bro, you're like, yeah, I sat down with this woman two months and nothing, right? Well, there's no discerning happening, right? Like, yeah. I feel if you, with therapy, if you don't want to take help, like if you want, yeah. you're taking the step, but if you actually don't want to like help yourself, no matter what she's going to do, he or she, you're just not going to improve. It's here. It's like Mohanad. You can ask yourself those really deep questions, but you have to be willing to try to answer them where there's no sense in asking the question. It's all what? It's bias. Bias? I feel like the bias. point of therapy is to get another perspective on the issue. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah, if I'm I just would. sitting there meditating, I'm probably going to think the same thing over and over, and I'm not going to develop an answer in the end. Angel, you hear that? Here's what he's saying, dog. You're only looking at things through your perspective, you know? I, I genuinely, maybe this is wrong to some people, but I genuinely feel like I only need my own perspective to deal with what I'm dealing with. Dude, I know what touche. I can handle and I know what I can't handle. And having somebody else be like, oh yeah, you need this help to handle this. You're not going to tell me what I need to no, handle. No, 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 hang on, hang on. But they might, dude, that's a very cool idea, by the way. And cool idea. <laughs> okay. But however, not the last one. The last thing you said, it's like, a, if, you, if you and I were talking together, I would never tell you, this is what you need. I would say, hey, have you ever thought about this or thought about that? I'm going to give you some kind of question, which is like, in large part, what happens in this class, right? Like we're asking, I'm asking questions. I'm getting us to ask questions and think about things that we probably haven't really they haven't thought about. Some things you've thought about, but most things you haven't because that's the nature of it, right? That's how this operates. Um, does anyone have a question they want to kick out there? Bro. I got a great question. Great question, man. Who's it for? It's on, dude. Okay. So, Sai, I want to hear your opinion. When I talk to a lot of men about their mental health, it's always, oh, just go to the gym. You'll you'll be fine. Just go to the gym. And that's what I hear all of the time on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. It's go to the gym. You'll be fine. What's your opinion on that? I think it's so messed up, first of all. But I'm not saying gym doesn't help someone. It's even for girls, like, there's this thing, like, when you break up, everybody's like, oh my God, the one who's hurt the most has the best, like, glow up because of going to the gym. I think, here's the thing that people don't get. Going to the gym makes you feel happy because of the hormones in your body. It's like facilitating you to increase more, like, happy, in like simple the, terms, the endorphins and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. In simple terms, just makes you happy. And that is why people say go to the gym. But people now, especially men, because they don't want to talk about their feelings, easiest thing, go to the gym, bro. Go. Here's the thing. I know people who go to the gym and they're so depressed. And the thing is they make other people's lives worse. Men who don't talk about their emotions, they, they like mess up everything. Dude, you guys hear that on the end, right? Yeah? Dude. Does uh, anybody have a question? 
We got we have time for one more question. Anyone want to ask a question? All right. So you know, like when you're, how do you know when to go to a therapy? So like when you're sick, it's obvious you f you don't feel well. Or in case if you're like old, you have you want to go for a checkup. But when do you go to therapy? Like you don't want to waste money just you know going out of a whim, feel like oh I'm just having a bad day, or maybe I'm feel like I'm depressed or something like hang, that. But hang on, I want Mohanad to answer. Mohanad, the our Saudi friend. You're gonna tell you're gonna tell us when you know it's time to go to therapy, man. Um, when the problem is serious, you know, <laughs> when it's affecting your, when you're actually thinking about it a lot, when you feel more lethargic in the day, when you feel yourself thinking a lot more, you know what I'm saying? And it's also, uh, you know, you can't just go to therapy and expect it to work. It, a lot of it has to do with whether you jive with your therapist or not. Like so much of it does. Um, but... You know, there's not really like a like a, a trigger in your brain that's like, okay, now I need to go to a therapist. You know, it's more like you reflect and you see that the problem is bigger than you, or like you can't handle it. Your friends can't handle it. This is like, you know. Yeah.